Hey everyone, this is James, and in this video, let's go over what Major General Bill said in episode 3 of The Ones Who Live. Spoiler alert if you're not caught up. Spoiler alert. Okay, at the funeral, Major General Bill had a sword, and he was talking about somebody named Mercer. I've seen a lot of things in the comments that it somehow connects to Commonwealth and that Mercer. It doesn't. As far as I know, it doesn't. Not in any way. Not in any form. Just in name. Just in name. It has nothing at all to do with Commonwealth and that Mercer. And some people were like, well, maybe it's a foreshadowing or, you know, it's this or that. I don't think so. It's just a story. It, it's a real man from history. It matches up because he died and is buried in Philadelphia. Uh, he saved a city. So it's just coincidence that he's got the same name as a guy in Commonwealth. It's not related. So what did Major General Bill say? He had a sword, and he said, some of you guys know about this sword, why I love it, why I like it. Um, it was confiscated. Either they were trying to save it or steal it. Um, somebody, and they found it in a truck. The Air Force did. So he's telling the story. And of course, it's Okafor's funeral. Okafor saved the city. Um, along with Bill, Bill and the Pennsylvania National Guard was helping defend the city as well. So this reflects to who this guy Mercer is. And they're talking about Hugh Mercer. And this was back during the Revolutionary War of America. Born 1726, died 1777. Mercer was a Scottish doctor. He immigrated to Pennsylvania in 1747. And I don't know if immigrated is the right word. He left, fled, maybe even, because he was in a war over there and they lost. So here he comes over to America and eventually, he served in the British Army during the Seven Years' War, where he became friends with George Washington. And then Mercer joined the Continental Army and was promoted in 1776 by Washington to Brigadier General. Mercer participated in the Battle of Trenton, and days later, during the Battle of Princeton, was assaulted by British troops who thought he was Washington. They surrounded him. Um, he received seven bayonet wounds. Benjamin Rush, a fellow patriot and physician, treated Mercer, but he died nine days later. So one of the battles he was in, the Battle of Trenton, it's a famous American victory. There's a second Battle of Trenton also. He was partly responsible for the defense of the city. So that ties in with Okafor and uh, Major General Bill, defense of the city, Philadelphia. Then the Battle of Princeton. It was January 3rd. The Army met two British regiments and a mounted unit on their way to Princeton, New Jersey. Mercer's horse was shot from beneath him and he fell. The British thought he was Washington. They surrounded him, demanded that he surrender, but rather than lose, he jumps up and he fights back with that sword or saber. So he's trying to fight off the British who's surrounding him at this point. He was beaten down and stabbed seven times with a bayonet. Legend has it that he refused to leave his soldiers, so they propped him up against a white oak tree and defended him. Whether this is true or not isn't proved, but the Mercer Oak is now the seal of Mercer County, New Jersey. So a lot of historians say Mercer, Hugh Mercer, was instrumental in winning the American Revolutionary War. Because once Washington saw what happened, he rallied the troops. They had several victories, something they needed. Uh, Benjamin Franklin was over in France trying to get France to help us, and they wouldn't because they're like, well, you're kind of losing. But this all happened. It was a chain of events. We started winning some battles because of morale and like, you know, we got to win this thing. And it showed France that, hey, maybe we can win this thing. And they started helping us out. So there's a lot of history there. Hopefully I didn't get too much of it wrong. If I did, let me know down in the comments. But that's the backstory of that saber, of that sword and the man behind it. And the reasoning that Major General Bill said that there's no relation really to the Mercer in Commonwealth. And just as an extra little side note, Hugh Mercer of the American Revolution, he was born in Scotland, but he fought for America. And then 31 years after the tragic death of Hugh Mercer, his grandson, Hugh Whedon Mercer, was born in Fredericksburg, Virginia, and he went on to fight in the Civil War. He was in the 1st Georgia Infantry on the Confederacy side. He also rose to Brigadier General. His grandson survived the Civil War, and his grandson did survive the Civil War. Another thing the story does is point to Rick. He's on two sides as well. Just like Hugh Mercer had been on a couple different sides in different wars throughout his life. 
But it also points to Rick could be the figure of Washington in that story. So now let's talk about that book that Major General Bill gave to Ogavor and to Rick. And right before that, he used a word, pharmacon. Bill said what it meant pretty much right there. It means both drug and poison in ancient Greek. Cure and poison, as Major General Bill said. And Bill says he's still just not sure about Rick. You know, Okafor trusted both of them. He was really into Thorne. You know, he moved her up ranks and stuff like that. But he's just unsure about Rick. You know, even way back when sitting on the bench and talking to Rick, there's a little mistrust going on there. And I said Bill gave Okafor the book also. And he says, I wasn't sure about him either. So, you know, there's a moment. Sometimes I think Major General Bill is simply going by this philosophy from, like, the book. And what's the book about? What's it called? It was Martial Arts, the Book of Family Traditions of the Art of War. And it's not to be confused with the Art of War. Different book, different author. But it is a book, you could say, military strategy. And it analyzes a conflict, say, between two men armed with swords. But it scales it up even bigger, you know, to bigger battles and stuff. And you could also look at this um, and take lessons, uh, life lessons, you know, just in general. One passage from the book, it says, It may happen that myriad people suffer because of the evil of one. In such a case, a myriad of people are saved by killing one man. Would this not be a true example of the sword that kills is the sword that gives life? The book goes into talking about yin and yang. It talks about the life-giving sword. And, and there's a lot of stuff in there. And it does parallel with the ones who live. And really, I think the takeaway from it is that you can save a whole bunch of people by killing one person sometimes. And that was the what happened with Okafor. He killed 4,000, including his wife, to save the city. You know, Rick may not have to sacrifice Michonne like Okafor had to sacrifice his wife. But it does seem like by killing one man, you save many. And is that Rick killing Major General Bill? You know, Okafor gave Rick and Thorne some books, and he studied with them on the philosophy and stuff like that. And you really got to get your mind into it as far as, and I'm going to do a video on it later on. I've been working on it, and it's about the trolley, you know, experiment, idea, thing. And, of course, that's the whole thing about saving uh, the many versus the few or vice versa. What do you do? And that's really what this kind of boils down to as far as what Okafor did, the books, the philosophy that they're pushing to, say, Thorne and Rick with these books. There's definitely a lot of clues, a lot of things that point to that specific fact of killing one or killing a few to save the many. That's the recurring theme, it seems like. And that may be heading toward the finale, you know, uh, all about the finale. Like, well, this is how it's going to play out somehow, some way. They're going to have to kill a few to save the many. Is that the summit? Is that killing all the upper echelon and the 2,000 frontliners and Jadis, you know, and all those bad people with Thorn seems like may have to be included in that. I think we're definitely leading to something in that vein. I mean, we've got to. There's too many clues. Uh, the book, you know, uh, what Okafor did. There's just too much setting up uh, for something like that not to happen. But that is the funeral scene explained who Major General Bill was talking about. I think that's an interesting story in itself. I mean, I could do a whole video on Mercer and now you know about the book that Bill gave Rick. But of course, episode three was jam-packed with all kinds of details and information. I will be making some more videos detailing some of that stuff out, trying to answer some of the questions, and of course, more theorizing and discussing. Hey, you guys, let me know what you think about it down in the comments below, and you know I'll join you there. This is James and Nashville. As always, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more dead stuff.